Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and that you're staying safe out there. So it's time for another scroller box and yeah, as you can see the postal services haven't been very kind to this one. It was a little delayed but I think it is because of this situation that is going on right now. I'm just happy it is here now. And if you didn't see my previous scroller box unboxing, scroller box has changed their design a bit with a new logo and a new box so that is pretty exciting so let's open this oops i don't want it to open upside down thank you oh it seems like everything has fallen out of the wrapping but yeah let's take a closer look wow it is really falling apart so let's start with a featured artist oh this is nice some kind of geometric pattern illustration kind of. So the artist that made this lovely artwork is called Hatch or Dave Smith and here is where you can find them if you want to see more of their art. Ah, this looks a little dented as well. Gold line A5 layout pad with 20 sheets of 70 GSM paper. So yeah, it is quite a thin paper, but it is nice with a whole pad. And this is produced exclusively for scroller box, so that is pretty cool. So let's open this one. It is already open for me. Of course we have to open it the proper way. Have a sticker. Oh, that is lovely. It is one of the characters from the art print. Then we have the little menu, which I won't look at just yet. Oh, this is so long. I thought it was just a short one. So we have a chew bar for the snack of this box. Oh, that's an interesting sound. It is almost metallic. Anyway, the first art supply is these Tri-Blend markers from Spectrum Noir and I have actually tried this out before. I did a review of them a while ago, so if you want to check that out, I will leave a link to it here somewhere. What is a little unique with these ones is that you have free markers in one. As you can probably see, we have three different tones. We have a lighter one, a mid-tone, and a darker tone. And this is so that you more easily can blend the colors. If you are a beginner with markers, I can imagine it being quite nifty and practical having all the different tones in one marker so to speak. You can basically blend all the colors together but this might be a little more helpful in the beginning. So the colors we have is antique pink, gold brown and turquoise shades and at the end where we have the light colors the caps are lighter and at the darker end we have darker caps which is quite practical. So, and we also have the color codes. This is actually one of my favorite erasers when I'm not using the kneaded eraser. They aren't completely dust free but they are way better than some other erasers. Then we have a graphite pencil and this is from Lyra and it's called Rembrandt and this is a regular HB pencil. I have quite a collection of graphite pencils from Scrollerbox now. And then we have a fine liner pen. I suppose. This is a Molotow black liner in the size 0.4 and this is apparently a permanent fine liner but it is also water based. I am always a little concerned using permanent fine liners with markers because the alcohol in the markers tend to dissolve the permanent liner but if it is water based maybe it will work in different ways. I have no idea, let's find out. Also let's check out the scroller challenge which is Imaginarium, a place dedicated to imagination. Oh, that is very interesting. Yeah, that will be fun. But first, let's swatch the art supplies. And let's use this gold line paper pad. Oops. I tried to bend the cover sheet around the pad to have it on the back side, but that didn't work at all, apparently. Let's start with a fancy graphite pencil. And yes, this is definitely a graphite pencil. Let's see if it will erase. Yeah, as you can clearly see, there is dust coming off from this eraser. But as I said, it is definitely not leaving as much eraser dust on the paper as many other erasers do. Then the Molotov fineliner. 
and let's make some lines to try the markers on. Now let's try out the tri-blend markers, starting with the lightest shade of gold. Then we have the mid-tone. I now remember one thing I didn't like with these markers, they are squeaky. So let's try to blend them together. Going over the lighter tone with a mid-tone and then blending that out with a lighter tone again. Then going in with the darkest tone and blending that out with a mid-tone. And yeah, as you can see, we get a somewhat seamless blend, so that is pretty nice. Oh my gosh, these are noisy. Darkest tone. That is another thing I noticed when I was reviewing these markers. For some of the colors, there isn't that much different between the different shades. So yeah, you can't really see that much different in this blend, I think. And another thing I don't really like with these markers is that they are quite chunky to hold. They are very thick. I'm not a huge fan of the hexagon shape. It feels a little sharp in your hand to hold. All right, so that are all the art supply in March's box, so let's try to draw something. So yeah, let's get started. Oh, and I almost forgot to try out the markers on the fine liner. Remember to always try out your supplies so that they work together. But it seems like it is working pretty well. No bleeding or smudging or anything. Awesome. All right, so at first I felt like this scrawler challenge would be perfect for me, drawing imaginary places and creatures. That is what I've been doing in my art lately anyway. It was a pretty wide subject though, and maybe it was a little too wide for me because I had to think long and hard before I could create something that felt inspiring to me. And I also blame it a little bit on the allergies. I love the warm spring weather, but pollen can just go and die. But I still managed to work out an idea that I thought felt interesting and that would look good with this color scheme that we were given. So we have this box with a tree growing out of its butt and there's mushrooms and a crescent moon, vines, planets, a lot of ice, crystals. I managed to cram in a bunch of things that is often floating around in my imagination whenever I think of things that I want to draw. So I traced the sketch from the iPad onto an A4 Copic paper and I decided to not use the paper that was included in the box. I just thought it felt a little too small for this project that I wanted to do. But I always appreciate that Scrawler Box gives us paper to draw on. That is really great. I am not sponsored by Scrawler Box by the way, but I can highly recommend them. I will have a link to where you can subscribe to them in the description box below. Also, thanks Scrawlerbox for sending me these boxes. And I would love to say that I did this drawing in one go without any trouble or anything, but what I really did was the classical draw this again and again and again ritual. I'm pretty sure that some of you guys are familiar with that too. So I sketched it on the paper and then I lined it with a Molotov liner. And please hear me, there is nothing wrong with this liner. Quite the opposite to be honest, it is very pigmented. However, I do prefer my liners to be a little thinner and drier. Not dried out, obviously, but I like when you can get the sketchy kind of lines, and that isn't really working when the liner is too juicy. And this Molotov liner is very juicy and bold, and that is not what I prefer, as I mentioned. So to make a long story short, I didn't like how the line art turned out, and I thought maybe it is because of the allergies, I had a headache and I was tired so I tried to draw it again and this time I did it off camera to get a little bit less pressure on me and I took my time with it but it just turned out I didn't like that one either and third time's the charm you know so I decided to try to draw it again but this time I skipped the line art completely so here we are on the third try and yes I could have just left that out and not mentioned it at all you wouldn't know but I like to show my mistakes 
mistakes and struggles too, because it happens to all artists. It is from the mistakes or the happy accidents, as Mr. Bob Ross said, that we learn from, so it is a very important part of the whole drawing experience and process. And in this case, it did result in something different than what I normally do. Anyway, I decided to try out a more experimental style where I'm getting more use out of the graphite pencil. I often just use the pencils included in these boxes for sketching and nothing else really, but now it will get a little bit bigger role to play, in this art at least. So since I'm not a fan of using the Molotov pen for the lining, I wanted to try sort of like a lineless style. I'm only using the pencil to do the lines with, so it is a a very subtle line work. So let's talk a little about the coloring. I do really like the color scheme. The colors feels very playful together, if that's a thing. And I was debating with myself if you could really call this a free color challenge, or if it is nine when combining the tones together. But I would actually say that it is free colors in nine different tones or shades, because if you think about it, sometimes when doing a normal free color challenge, you sometimes use a blender marker, or if you use watercolors, you use water to dilute the paint or marker to get a lighter shade of that one color. It is still the same color, only lighter. Then you can layer the colors to get darker shades, so yeah, it is really not that different from using these markers. The different tones that you would normally get from diluting or layering the paint or markers, it is just divided into three different parts in one marker. So yeah, that is my thoughts anyway. What do you guys think? And as I mentioned before, these tri-blend markers might be good for beginners to learn and understand blending, but they are a little gimmicky to be honest. They are quite uncomfortable and clumsy to work with, and the nib is so freaking squeaky, I don't understand. But the markers itself though, the ink and all that, it is quite decent to be fair. I tried to keep all the colors clean, meaning I didn't want to blend or mix the different colors together, like mixing the pink and yellow, or yellow and turquoise and such, and I think it added to a more cartoony and whimsical style, which was very fun to play around with. I really like how it turned out, and even if I didn't want to use the fine liner for outlining, I still wanted to include it in the art somehow, because that is what the scroll challenge is about, using all the supplies that comes in the box. Now I didn't use the paper though, but anyway. So I decided to use the fine liner for the background instead, and I am really happy I did that because it added a lot more contrast to the art, which I think it really needed. And I'm leaving a white gap or line around the foreground to help separate it from the background, and I was a little afraid that it would take a lot longer to fill up all that space with that tiny little nib, but fortunately the boldness and juiciness of the pen really helped me here, so it didn't take that long actually. I'm also not doing a solid black background, I'm leaving little gaps or holes here and there to give it a more organic and sketchy vibe, which I think contrasts so well with the rest of the art. Then I'm going in with a graphite pencil to define some of the lines and to add more shading on top of the markers, just to add some more contrast and textures. I really like the simplicity of the art and the coloring. I'm so glad I decided to skip the outlines and experiment a bit more with the style. And yeah, I also want to share some news with you. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for prints, so my art will soon be available as art prints, among other things, at redbubble.com and I've been working really hard to create some lovely things to add to my store. I will talk more about that in a video very soon, but if you want to, you can go to my shop already and give it a follow so that you will know once I upload something. I think that is how it works 
anyway. And if you have any request about which of my art I should add to the store, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I think this little tree fox is done now. I really like how it turned out and I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!